threat or opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, join me as I take you on a fantasy journey into the future. Let's say 2119, a hundred years from now. Imagine that there are a group of historians anxious to discover what the European world looked like in 2019. Let's ignore their laughs and talks about Twitter, Facebook and what on earth was the internet. What amazed them were the newspaper headlines for January 2019. Let me just give you two examples. 117 drawn in Mediterranean as migrant boat collapsed. Boris made a romantic pitch for Conservative leadership by promising to slash the number of immigrants allowed into the UK. I can't even begin to imagine what they thought of such attitudes in 2019. So why has immigration become so controversial? A recent poll says that 40% of Britons now see immigration as the most important issue facing our country. Much of the blame must lie with the xenophobic exaggerations made during the referendum on the EU which scared many people. Threats such as schools will be overcrowded, having to wait much longer for medical appointments and increased competition for jobs and houses. Outrageous, perhaps. Deceitful, definitely. It is true that the number of immigrants to the UK has increased dramatically in recent years, but we need to keep a sense of perspective about this. There have always been population movements. 12,000 years ago, this island we are on was uninhabited and has been subject to successive waves of immigrants. The Celts, the Vikings, the Normans and the Scots who have made us what we are today. If you look at the countries from which people are fleeing, it is clear that war, persecution and famine continue to be the major causes of migration. Surely with our history, we should be sympathetic to their plight. How can any of us forget the heart-wrenching image of the three-year-old Syrian boy lying listless on the Turkish beach? Indeed. Another lesson from our history is that whatever the short-term costs, immigrant communities such as Huguenots, Jews, and more recently Indians and Chinese have brought enormous economic benefits. Moreover, they have helped to shape us so that we are now a richly multicultural society. So how will I answer the question I asked at the beginning? As the fifth richest country in the world, we have a moral obligation to help those in political distress by admitting them as legal immigrants. After all, it is essentially the most effective foreign aid programme our country could ever devise. Also, this topic means a lot to me as I am part of an extended immigrant family. Thank you. Privilege is defined as a special right or advantage granted or available only to a particular person or group. Therefore, female privilege is the idea that women possess certain advantages over men. You may ask, if male privilege exists, does female privilege? Well, that's for you to decide. Many of you will have heard of the tampon tax. This effectively states that tampons and other sanitary products are currently classed as a luxury and a non-essential item. Most of you will know that this is not the case and there is no question that this needs to change soon. Recently, MPs have started addressing the very real truth about period poverty. This is the fact that one in ten girls across the UK can't afford to buy menstrual products. It is estimated that between sanitary products, pain relief and new underwear, the average woman spends £128 per year on her period. This equates to £18,000 in a woman's lifetime. This isn't exactly my definition of privilege. Another issue which I'd like to talk about is the gender pay gap. If I follow my current aspirations for the future and become an engineer, I will be making 78p for every one pound my male counterpart makes. It may not seem like an awful lot, but my annual salary would average out as 13,000 pounds less than my male co-workers. Even though we would be doing equal work, putting in equal hours, and especially since there is a desire for female engineers, I don't think it's much to ask for equal salaries. Furthermore, in the ranking of the top 100 highest paid athletes, there's only one woman, Serena Williams. 
The sports sector is one of the worst for unequal pay. In a recent investigation, it revealed that Neymar, a Brazilian footballer, earns 32.9 million pounds for simply signing his contract. His salary is almost exactly the same as 1,693 female footballers from all around the world. This severe pay gap shows no signs of closing and the Football Association shows no indication of helping and they once said that they cannot eliminate the pay gap completely and I only have one thing to say to this, if it's equal work, it's equal pay. We live in a world where phrases such as you run like a girl have become synonymous with weak and are used as an insult. But we also live in a world where men are chastised for showing emotion, for showing emotions and phrases like man up tell men to move further away from womanhood because femininity equals weakness. These social norms are as harmful for men as they are for women since it not only reinforces the idea that women are the lesser gender but it also drives men to carry an unfair burden just to maintain their manhood. No one wins this scenario. All of these things tell impressionable young women like me that, that men's lives are held at a higher value than theirs. Today I am standing in a room with future pilots, future teachers, future politicians, doctors and nurses. So let us to be the ones to change these pretenses. The future is female. In 2015, France's ecology minister picked a fight with everyone's favourite hazelnut spread, Nutella. She was referring to the chocolate hazelnut spread as an example of a food made with the environmentally destructive but very commonly used ingredient, palm. Well, I'm here today to pick that same fight. Should we say no to Nutella? Palm oil is derived from the fruit of certain palms. As innocent as it seems, sinister facts are hidden under the canopy of the rainforest and they paint a very different picture of this oil. I'm sure you've all seen the advertisement Iceland released at Christmas time last year. The orangutan without a home in the forest because of the production of palm oil there. It was moving in a way that kick-started my boycott of products with palm oil in them, such as Nutella or Oreos. I know, shock horror. I haven't eaten Nutella since November of 2018, and I'll tell you why. Up to 300 football fields of forest are cleared every hour to make room for palm plantations, creating billions of tons of carbon pollution and killing endangered wildlife. In the past 10 years, the orangutan population has decreased by 50% as a result of habitat loss from forest clearing for palm plantations. I don't know about you, but this statistic is frightening. Think about it. Your grandchildren, or even children, may never see an orangutan because we cause the extinction of these creatures from the forest. You may be thinking, Alice, what does this have to do with me? Why should I care about some orange monkeys on the other side of the world? Well, orangutans play an important part in forest regeneration through the fruits and seeds they eat. Their disappearance may represent the loss of thousands of species of plants and animals within that ecosystem. Do you care now? Yes, the production of palm oil is fatal to species like the tiger or orangutan. By digesting it can be fatal for us too. Palm oil is very high in saturated fat and according to the experts, diets high in saturated fat have been linked to chronic diseases, specifically coronary heart disease. These health habits alone should convince you to purge palm oil from your diet. According to Rainforest Rescue, 50% of the packaged foods, baked goods, cosmetic and cleaning products found on supermarket shelves contain palm oil. So what can we do about this seemingly inescapable fiend? By simply starting a conversation with your friends, you could advise them on what food to avoid, like Oreos, a company that uses unsustainable palm oil in their products. Ferrero, the maker of Nutella, is actually a supporter of the Palm Oil Innovation Group. The organisation stated, We consider Ferrero to be one of the more progressive, consumer-facing companies with regards to palm oil sourcing. Therefore, is saying no to Nutella really the most effective thing we can do for the environment? I'll leave that up to you to answer. But, as they say, one small step for man, a giant leap for mankind. If each of us gave something up, be it meat or Nutella or plastic straws, I believe we can make a difference on this planet. Thank you.